business wellbeing and performance has continued to drop, while COVID-19 remains the dominant cause, financial and cash flow pressures are on the up. BDO advisory partner Kimberly Simon joins me now to talk about the latest findings. So it's been six months since your last report. What are the key changes? Yeah, so wellbeing um, we've seen has gone down se- uh, seven points to 62 out of 100 on the WHO 5 score. So the WHO 5 score is the World Health Organization's internationally recognised measure of, of wellbeing. Um, so what we've done is we've asked respondents to rate how they've been feeling against a number of key statements over the last two weeks. Um, and, and yeah, so we've seen that go, go down by seven points. With, with half of business leaders saying they're experiencing negative well-being, um, pretty concerning. Um, so in, in our previous report, um, COVID was, was the leading issue, um, clearly, as we've experienced, but we're seeing that decline, still the number one, but we're seeing that drop back. And it's really um, those financial um, financial issues, financial concerns are really coming through now, um, combined with um, external economic and political factors coming up in the third. And um, what does sort of a neat score of 62 mean to mean to you? Um, so essentially we're seeing um, an increase in the, in the number of business owners um, that are experiencing negative well-being. So 62, um, it, it's, it's essentially it's worse than the last survey that we took. And um, was there anything that surprised you in the findings? Yeah, so... Considering the number of um, businesses that are struggling with their financials and that's causing a lot of concern, only a third are saying that they're using strong financial processes as a way of combating that, Um, which it it seems like one should go with the other um, if you're concerned about your financials, you get in and and you find out more about them. Um, So we thought that was pretty low. Um, The other thing was supply chain. So um, a number of businesses have been concerned about supply chain, um, but that's come back a wee bit in this report, which makes us think really that that business owners have found ways around supply chain issues. They've been ordering stock ahead of time and really starting to, I guess, live with the new normal. Um, However, we do think that that is creating those flow-on impacts in terms of cash flow and and other things when that hasn't been planned properly. And, um, yeah, I'm quite interested in those sort of flow-on challenges. Do you think that's a one-off or do you think that's of a broader issue? Oh, absolutely a broader issue. I think um, the wider political um, and economic climate in the moment, with, with inflation being where it is, um, with interest rates where they are, um, and you combine that with, with that tight labour market that we're seeing, there's a lot of factors at play that, that are really creating um, a lot of havoc for business owners, um, how they're trying to run their businesses and how they're trying to plan their financials. And um, sort of looking forward to the next six months, sort of COVID as a challenge appears to be on the decline, as you were sort of mentioned earlier, um, but financial and cash flow concerns increasing. Um, what does this tell us about the business sector? Um, It it tells us really that they're seeing an end to COVID, um, or again, as I said, with the supply chain, they've learned to live with it. Um, However, those those concerns around cash flow, I think it it comes back to the inflationary pressures and and the rises in interest rates. Um, Because the the climate is so uncertain, businesses can't really see what's going to happen, and it makes it really difficult to plan for. So I think looking ahead to the next six months, um, it, it's quite difficult to do uh, because you, you can't just can't tell where things are going to land at the moment. And um, are you expecting it to stay at that same level or increase as we get closer to a lot of legislation coming through or do you expect it to decrease and go down? Um, I wouldn't say it's going to decrease. At, at the very least, it'll, it'll stay where it is or increase. But what will change, of course, is businesses' ability to adapt with new legislation and things like that. So the longer legislation is in play, the longer businesses learn to to adapt to it and and deal with it. And um, what risks do you foresee and how can business leaders um, mitigate those? Yeah, so we we actually have a a second report out, um, well, it's coming out very shortly, which is around the risk landscape. But to just briefly touch on the main points, um, cash flow and inflation, as I said, Interest rates, I think we know that that they are rising and are predicted to continue rising. Um, Political uncertainty, of course, we've got our very own election 
next year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where that land. Um, supply chain still still a pretty big risk, um, given what's going on over in Europe um, and, and the war on talent. Uh, I think that's coming through um, quite strongly um, with Kiwi businesses just struggling to find people um, and needing to, in some instances, close their doors because they just simply haven't got the staff to run their businesses. And um, what can businesses do to sort of guard against those risks? Um, well, the war on talent's a pretty difficult one to um, to combat right now. The people aren't there. So it's at the moment, it's a bit of a waiting game, waiting for those borders to really reopen um, and to try and drive people into New Zealand to um, fill some of those roles. Um, a little bit reliant on some of those that potentially don't have roles at the moment, taking them up, <laughs> that would be quite useful too. Um, to a certain extent, businesses are, um, are paying for, for people to use um, to bring them into their businesses. But again, there's only far so far you can stretch. Outsourcing is, is a good method there. If, for example, if you can't find an HR advisor in your business, you might choose to outsource that and, and use an HR firm. So there are ways to um, adapt in certain roles. Um, on supply chain, I think that, that purchasing stock ahead of time and, and a number of businesses following COVID have, have really nailed that. Um, they understand that just in time is, is no longer the appropriate method of stock management um, and are planning well out into the future. However, what that does bring, as I said earlier, is those cash flow constraints. So it really does need to be forecasted and, and managed appropriately. Overall, that, that forecasting in terms of cash flow and, and talent and supply chain is, is the most important thing going forward, making sure we really are planning out, um, in some cases, several years ahead to try and manage, um, manage businesses. And um, on that sort of topic of adaptability, how important is flexibility in this landscape and what can businesses do to increase that? Um, absolutely. So flexibility, um, pretty dear to my heart as a working parent, um, is, is number one, a fantastic thing for business owners to use to try and maintain their own work-life balance and their own boundaries between between work and home, um, particularly from a well-being perspective, actually being able to manage your business in a way that works for you um, and is beneficial for your, for your mental health, flexibility is, is absolutely key. Um, the second piece around flexibility is that employee engagement. Um, we have that, as I said, war on talent. Um, if we're not being flexible in terms of, you know, allowing people to work from home or work flexible hours, then you may struggle even more to find staff to fill those spots. And um, I imagine with sort of everything else going on, wellness gets sort of put on the back burner a wee bit. What is the consequence of that? Uh, burnout, essentially. I think, um, number one, for, for business leaders and, and also for their staff. Um, I mean, I'm running a, a business myself and I think managing my employees' wellbeing is, is extremely important. Um, if we're not looking after them at, at the end of the day, they won't be there to do the jobs um, and also it's part of being a good employer. Um, mm. But managing your own well-being to, for you to be there to actually focus on your business, you need to look after your whole self.